Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this mouse. This is a 172nd scale plastic kit from Vespid Models, which I understand to be a new company. Currently they offer two kits, this mouse and a British Comet, which I also have but haven't built yet. I rather like the artwork on the front of the box. The mouse is quite an imposing beast. The back of the box is blank, but the sides do show us some of the detail, decal sheet, photo etch and metal gun barrels, which I think is a very nice inclusion. The other side shows a couple of basic painting examples. Looking at the box is cool, but it's even cooler to look at the stuff that's inside the box. All of this stuff. The sprues are individually wrapped which is a bit wasteful, but I suppose it does keep things from being lost if they do happen to come off the sprues. There are two sprues for wheels and suspension parts, and I think you'll have a really good time with these. The parts on these sprues are really quite nice. Being that Vespid is a new company, and I hadn't really heard anything about them before buying the kits, I didn't really have high expectations, so I'm pleasantly surprised by the plastic here. It's very neat and well moulded. There are of course mould lines, but they're always there, and in this case they are quite minor indeed. The detail is very nice, and while this is a mouse, so it's largely big slabs of metal, there is obviously still some detail, like the joins in the armour and things like that. So while it's not covered in rivets and panel lines and such, there is still a lot of good detail to this kit. I like the casting detail on the gun mantlet, it's quite convincing, as are the bolts around the gun. Speaking of the gun, the plastic guns in this kit have been slide moulded so the ends of the barrels look more convincing without having to be drilled out, which I think is always a nice touch. Of course there are also metal gun barrels, but we'll get to those in a moment. The hull top is really clean and well detailed looking, which I guess having seen all of the previous parts so far isn't that surprising. All of these parts look like they're going to go together very nicely with minimum fuss, and for the most part that is true. There are some issues but we'll get to those later, and they're easy enough to overcome. I was pretty impressed with this turret. It's got a lot of really good detail considering that it's a single piece. The flame cut ends of the armour plates look really good. And here are those metal guns I mentioned earlier. These look awesome and I think this is a really good inclusion. You would normally have to buy this kind of thing separately. I also appreciate that they still included the plastic guns, which are also pretty good. The photo etch is mostly grills for the upper hull, nice flat parts that shouldn't be too challenging to install. There's also a strap for the fuel drum. These decals look pretty good to me, though obviously I haven't used them yet, so I can't speak of their quality, but they look good and there's a variety of markings which is always nice. The instructions also look rather good, though they are the kind that folds out rather than a booklet which I would prefer, but that is just personal preference. The instructions themselves look pretty decent and weren't hard to understand or follow, though there was one or two places where it wasn't totally clear how a part should be oriented, but it could certainly be worse. The last couple of pages include some basic painting suggestions, which for some reason don't show any markings. Really that's fine, they are just suggestions anyway. The mouse didn't really see service, so there aren't really any historical markings anyway. Okay, let's get to the part where I glue the bits of plastic together. We're going to start by gluing this pile of wheels and suspensiony bits together. There really are quite a lot of these wheels, fortunately they're not hard to attach. There's a mounting nub for two wheels on each suspension unit. You could glue both wheels on at the same time, but there is a fair bit of play in the wheels, and I found doing this made it kind of hard to get both of them lined up nice and straight at the same time. So what I did was to glue one wheel to a suspension unit, set it aside to bond for a bit, and then I glue the second wheel to the suspension units. I just found that a bit easier to do. Of course your mileage may vary. When all of the suspension assemblies are assembled, they can then be attached in pairs to these support bar things. It's kind of hard to see, but there is keying in here to ensure that all of the wheel sets are facing the right way. Again, there is a bit of play here, so I try to get them together as neatly and straight as I could. They're not all perfect, but I feel like they're good enough. We end up with 12 of these. This was a little bit more work on the wheels than I was expecting, but they look good so I think it's worth it. It makes sense to then install these road wheel assemblies onto the hull. 
They go into place easily, though the fit isn't very tight, so there's going to be a bit of play in them. I was concerned that this might be an issue when it came time to attach the tracks and the hull sides, but it was mostly fine. There are a lot of wheels, so it does take a while to get them all on, but it does look pretty cool once they're there. You can probably see that they're not all perfect, and there is some wibbly wobbliness, but it should be fine, and it's much less noticeable from the side anyway. Next, this plate goes over the mount, I guess you would call it, for the idler wheel. This is simple enough, and there's obviously one for the other side as well. So that we have something to mount here, and so the tank doesn't look all weird, why not assemble the idler wheel? There is keying on this and it goes together easily enough. The halves of this wheel are identical so it doesn't matter which way around you install it. I assemble the drive sprocket next, and this is also pretty simple. These parts are keyed, so the teeth should line up nicely with each other, which is always helpful when it comes time to add the tracks. I install the idler wheels in their place at the front of the hull, which is very easy as you may have guessed it would be. I follow that with the drive sprockets at the rear. These are also easy to install, but there's no keying. I didn't think of it at the time, but it might be a good idea to leave these unglued until you're putting the tracks on, just to make it a bit easier to be sure the teeth mesh with the tracks properly. Speaking of tracks, it's now time to install them, and I have to say, this was my least favourite part of the model. The bottom run of tracks was slightly fiddly to get into place, likely from the couple of wheels that were out of alignment. Once I had the bottom run of tracks in place I added the rear section up to the drive sprocket and the front one up to the idler, and so far it looks decent enough, and wasn't too difficult. Next come the single links around the drive sprocket. These are all differently numbered parts and not especially hard to get into place, and they look okay. It's more or less the same at the front around the idler wheel. The real trouble started when I tried to install the track links for the upper run. The shorter bits from the drive sprocket and idler wheel were a bit annoying to try and get on, but the middle section was the worst. It wouldn't even go into place without the removal of some of the guide horns, and even then it was pretty frustrating to try and get into place, but I did get it there. The upper section of tracks won't be visible without some effort, so instead of going through the same annoyance on the tank's left side, I simply omitted the upper sections. The tracks themselves look great, very nice parts. It's just the installation of the upper track section that seems poorly thought out. This would have been a lot easier if it weren't for that part of the hull that goes over the top of the tracks. I certainly have encountered worse tracks, but this is the part of the kit that I enjoyed the least. To hide the missing tracks, I add the sides of the mouse. There are mounting plates for the idler wheels that are meant to be installed on the inside of this part, but I didn't feel like they were totally necessary, so I left them off. Attaching the sides of the hull is pretty simple, though a little bit of nudging and fiddling was needed. There's a whole bunch of keying along this part, and I add plenty of glue so that the glue god is appeased. Obviously I installed both sides of the hull, but I didn't film myself doing the right one. Next come these little things. These are a bit fiddly to get into place. There is keying, but it doesn't quite seem to work properly. These form the, I guess they're shackle mounts or towing points or something, and there is a bit of a gap around them, but they seem okay enough. I'll probably have to fill that in later. The one of whatever these are for the rear can be installed at this time, but instead of showing you that, I'm going to install the photo etch grills. These are pretty simple, they're just flat screens that don't require any bending or other modification. I'm sure you probably don't need to see me glue every single piece of photo etch into place, so here's the end result. This isn't going to be super noticeable once the tank is all painted up, and if you really wanted you could simply leave these off, but I think it looks pretty good, so I'm happy to have it on the model. Also, here's that rear shackle mount thing that I mentioned before. Very good. The instructions say to do this later, but I figured adding all of the details to the top of the hull would be a bit easier if it were connected to the rest of the hull, and I didn't see that it would cause any issues, so I glued those two halves together. You don't always have to follow the instructions precisely to a T, though do be sure to look ahead and make sure that you're not going to cause problems for yourself later on. The initial fit is pretty good, but I add a bit more glue and some pressure along the gaps down the side of the hull to make it fit just that little bit better. This didn't really take much extra effort, but it does improve the looks quite a bit. 
I think the hull looks really good, and it's an impressive model so far, even without all of the other bits. Also, you can see that the tracks look pretty good, even though we know that they're not complete under the hull sides. Let's add some more details, starting with this, I don't know what you would call it, shield, splash guard, whatever it is, there are small guide pins on the underside and it fits neatly into place, a bit of glue so that it stays there, and it's on. Then we can add the smaller ones to each side. I was admittedly a little bit messy with the glue, but it's extra thin glue, and you shouldn't notice the spills once the model is primed. Because allowing exhaust gases to build up inside the vehicle is a bad idea, exhaust pipes come next. They mount into these holes in the grills on both sides of the hull. These are easy enough to place, though a little bit of nudging was required. Nothing too exhausting to do though. See what I did there? Next, I install a couple of doodads for the hull rear. This one on the left is, well, I'm not sure, but it could be convoy lights. The central part seems to be a mount for the strap that holds the external fuel tank in place. Both of these were pretty easy to get into place. I then installed the driver's hatch, which is nice and wide. Luxurious. This drops into place very easily, and then I add the handle. The instructions seem to want you to add this before installing the hatch, which does seem reasonable, but I figured adding the handle with the hatch in place would be much less likely to result in a lost or broken part. Headlamps come next, and these were a little bit fiddly to get into place neatly, but not too bad. You might just need to give them a bit of a nudge. I then glue the two halves of the external fuel tank together. This is keyed, which is important because those nubs on the outer straps are the guides for mounting this onto the tank, and you want them aligned. Gluing said fuel tank onto the hull comes next, and I found it to be a bit tricky to get the mounting nubs into place, but I did eventually get there and glue everything together. Looks pretty good if you ask me, and even if you didn't ask, I said it anyway, so there. There's a piece of photo etch for a strap to hold the fuel tank in place, so I installed that next. There's a round nub under the tank on the rear of the hull, and a hole on the strap part that should mount over that. I then glue the middle section to the drum, and allow it to bond before bending the part around to the mounty thing that I glued on earlier, which is where I glue the other end of the strap. It's pretty simple as far as photo etch goes, though you do need to use super glue because plastic cement, as the name might imply, is for plastic and won't bond metal. It's not quite perfect, but I think it looks fairly decent. And with that, the hull is completed. Time for the turret, which was surprisingly simple to build. I start by gluing the gun mount into place. The instructions wanted this done later, but I figure doing it earlier and giving it time to bond properly was a better idea. It turns out I put the part onto which the gun will mount on backwards, but that's okay. It's not glued into place, and I was able to pry it out and put it around the right way. I've chosen to use the metal gun barrels, and that means more super glue. I start by gluing the small gun to the supporty thing that goes underneath both barrels, whatever that thing is called. There's a hole in the small gun barrel, and a mounting pin on the plastic part, which makes it easy to get these parts together correctly. I then glue that gun to the mantlet part, and once it's positioned, I glue the plastic parts together. There are some tiny notches in the mantlet, which act as guides for those thin plastic support rods. The instructions seem to want the main gun installed at this point, but that just isn't going to work. So I glue the lower turret part to the rest of the turret, which is quite easy, and as you can probably see, the keying for the mantlet on the end of the gun mount is now the right way around. The mantlet can then be glued on. Again, very easy. I would prefer the gun not to move, so once I'm happy with the elevation it will have, I apply glue around where the mantlet contacts the front of the turret. This will hold it in place good and proper. You might think, the gun comes next, but no. I figured it would be less cumbersome to add the details to the top of the turret without the gun getting in the way. This what I think is a periscope thing comes first. This is easy to put into place, just don't make the mistake I did and install the protective housing before the periscope. That housing can go into place next and it is pretty easy, though having previously pulled it off did make a bit of a mess. The two hatches come next, and this is just as easy as it looks unless it looks hard to you, in which case you're wrong and should look again. I add super glue to the two contact points for it and attach the main gun. 
You may find you need to nudge it a little bit to get it nice and straight, but that's not too difficult. You could of course also use the plastic gun options. They are the same, just plastic. But when you've got the option of metal ones, why not? They look great and you don't need to do any mold line removal on them. Always a bonus in my eyes. I was pretty impressed with these guns, and I do hope that future Vespid model kits have these kinds of options. I'm pretty sure their Comet does. Anyway, the turret can now join the hull using the simple locking tab mechanism many model tanks have. And there we have it. The Mouse German Super Heavy Tank by Vespid Models is now completed. As I've already mentioned, Vespid is a new company in the modelling world. And for a first release, which I believe this is, being numbered VS720001. For a first release, this is an amazing kit, and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. It looks fantastic, though of course it's not without its flaws. The main issue for me being the tracks. And then not the entirety of the tracks, pretty much just the upper run of the tracks which are hidden by the sides of the hull. I'm sure there's some dingling out there who's going to get all upset at me for omitting the upper run of tracks on one side, but really, unless you turn it upside down and shine some light in there, you can't tell if the tracks are there or not. And once everything is together, the tracks do look really good. The shackle mount things on the front and rear of the hull were a bit of a pain as well, but again, once it's all together it looks okay. There's also a gap at the front right, and one on the rear that I'll fill in too. I think in the grand scheme of things those are some pretty minor problems, though it is still worth pointing them out of course. So there's obviously some complaints, but I still think the model is great. Not only does it look awesome, but it's quite nicely detailed, and I think it's quite a good representation of the real thing. Mouse isn't exactly covered in intricate detail, it is a bit of a slab-sided chonker, but there is enough detail here to make it interesting to paint. There's all kind of edges and doodads that would catch paint and make weathering look interesting. I'm not planning on painting this anytime soon, having just recently painted a mouse, but I do think it's going to look awesome once it's got paint on it. I rather enjoyed building this kit. If you only saw me working on the tracks you might not get that impression, they weren't really a lot of fun, but you shouldn't let something like that ruin the rest of the build for you, so I did enjoy it quite a bit. Most of the parts didn't require a lot of cleanup, and more or less just dropped right into place. I didn't have any trouble with the metal parts, which is always a relief. I'm not the best at photo etch, but it's pretty easy to deal with when it's just flat pieces. It wasn't the quickest build I've ever done. I did this over the course of two streams for about five hours total build time. Obviously my building while streaming, videoing and not particularly rushing is likely going to be different to the amount of time it takes the average modeler to complete the kit, so you could probably whip it together in an afternoon. Though of course this is a hobby and not a race, so take your time and enjoy the build. If you are looking to buy either the Vespid Mouse or the Comet, it's available at Metro Hobbies. They haven't sponsored this video, but if you're looking, that is one of the places you can find this kit. I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to watch me build models like this live, you can do so over on Twitch. Go to twitch.tv slash herbert underscore erpaderp or follow the convenient link in the description. Give me a follow and drop by next time I'm live. It'll be good times. I'll probably be starting on the Vespid Comet soon. I suspect at the time of recording, few people are going to have built this kit, but if you have, and if you want to share pictures of the mouse or any other cool models you've made, feel free to drop by our Discord community and share some pictures. If you have any questions or comments, they're more than welcome in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch when I'm live. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.